Good evening. Good evening. Uh, before we get started, we have to remind you of the announcements. Please wear a mask over your nose at all times. Families can sit together. Please keep six feet apart from other parishioners. During communion, we ask you to keep your mask on and put your hands to this opening of the plexiglass if you're not familiar with it. Good evening, uh, brothers and sisters, and welcome to San Pedro Catholic Church. This Saturday evening, we celebrate the fourth sun Easter Sunday Vigil Mass. The celebrant of this evening's Mass is Father Frankie. The Mass is being offered in loving memory of Michael Allegri and in healing prayer for Baby Eve and Maria Elena.
Christmas has been offered in loving memory of Miguel Allegri, in loving memory of Andrew Dungan, and a healing mass for Maria Elena and Baby Eve. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Well, on this fourth Sunday of Easter, let us acknowledge our sins to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of the year. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, and namely by what means he was saved, then all of you and all of the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, in his name. This man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks to the Lord for his good. 
for his mercy endures forever. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have been my Savior. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. The stone rejected by the builders has become Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have been my Savior. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his kindness endures forever. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved. See what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and he has no concern for the sheep. I am a good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay down and power to take it up again. 
This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. First and foremost, I would like to thank Deacon Dan, as is Deacon Dan. You know, I was looking for a volunteer uh, to do the wedding this evening, and he volunteered himself. Thank you, Deacon. <laughs> well, on this day, we are celebrating what we call the Good Shepherd Sunday. And in the short gospel, Jesus presents himself as the Good Shepherd. He said, I am the good shepherd. And it makes a difference between a good shepherd and a hired man, who also happens to be a shepherd. But there is a huge difference, difference between those two. The good shepherd is always willing to die for the sheep, while a hired man will not do such a thing. Because he said, Oh, when the danger is coming, he said, I better leave and leave the sheep by themselves. But the good shepherd will confront all dangers that will come. I am the good shepherd, Jesus said. I'm willing to lay my, down my own life for the sheep. Why did Jesus choose this example? The example of sheep. As you know, in the time of Jesus, there are many sheep, sheep were everywhere in Israel. That was a common job that people had. And it was a very difficult job to do because you have to stay with the sheep. You have to stay there day and night. You have to keep watch. Well, when the danger comes, while the owner the, who hire a shepherd have great expectations about the man that they hire. They said, well, you need to stand by the sheep no matter what comes to your way. And very often, they are very disappointed. And the wolves often come and kill the sheep. But Jesus was also there, he noticed you know, those who are good will waste their lives to defend the sheep. No wonder he said, I am such a person, such a shepherd. What is so remarkable about sheep? We are all aware that sheep are calm, very peaceful animals. They are defenseless. They are very sure that they are safe when they are with the shepherd. Sheep oftentimes follow the shepherd's footsteps and the shepherd's voice. When the shepherd is there, they have no worry. But we also know that sheep are not intelligent animals, they are not smart. If you dig a hole here and you light up one of the sheep, if the first one falls into that pit, that's what the 99 will fall. Dogs will not do that. <laughs> Dogs are very smart, <laughs> you know. So the, no wonder they need somebody constantly with them. You know, they have to have somebody watching over them every step of the way. Jesus, our good shepherd, will do the same thing for us. When we are facing tough situations, we need to remember that we are in the hands of a good shepherd. We need to stay calm. Let us not panic or nor complain. Our good shepherd will take good care of us. He will find all our battles. He is the source for which our blessing flows. Well, Jesus is willing to waste his own life to save us. Isn't that what he did on Good Friday? 
with such a perfect shepherd. You see, many things can happen to you and I as we go through this life. We experience bad things at times. You know, we experience storms. Things that will come to us that we think we do not deserve those things. That we think, oh, you know, I'm so good. Why do I have to experience that in my life? But the Bible never said that whoever believes in God will never experience setback, will never experience disappointments, will never experience tough times in life. But one thing that the Bible said is that when those things come to our way, stay calm. Let God fight our battles. Jesus said, in the Gospel of St. Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse 27, he said, can any of you, can any of you add one day in your life just by worrying? We sometimes go to life very worried. It's morning, we begin to worry, but it will happen to us. Midnight, the same thing. And Jesus said, we need to stop it. Because he is the good shepherd. You should not be afraid. At least 266 times in the Bible, it is said, do not be afraid. Why? Because we have a good shepherd. Remember what God said to David in Psalm 22. When David said, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Though I walk in the valley of darkness, I feel no evil when you are always with me. But more, he said, you know what God does? He set a table, a table of blessings in front of his enemies. Well, when I read Psalm 23, so often I do, and I keep wondering the same thing. Why would God set a table for David's enemies in front of them? It would have been easier for God to say, well, I'm going to bless you, but not in front of them. I'm going to do it, you know, in the background, in the basement, somewhere. So they will not get jealous of you. But that was not what God did for David in Psalm 23. He said, you know what? I will set a table of blessings in front of your enemies. This is the way that God is. Well, he will do things, the things that to surprise us, but at the same time, he's showing us how he cares for all of us. We should not be worried about the storms of this life. They will come to us anyway, whether we worry or not. The reason why we live our lives with worries, with stress, with anxiety, with depression, is it because we do not always remember that we have such a good shepherd. He knows what's going on in your life. Your life is not a secret to Jesus. He knows, you know, your tough time. He knows, he knows, and he knows. You cannot hide anything from Jesus. And the message of today's gospel is this. Well, don't worry, be happy. Jesus invites us to stop worrying what will happen to us. And when we worry, we never stop and smell the flowers. We don't have time for that. But he's telling us, you know, I am the good shepherd. And he invites us to walk with him to green pastures. Don't worry, be happy as the sun goes. Besides, can a sheep feel insecure in its shepherd's hands? When we are in the hands of our dear Jesus, should we walk?
We now stand for our creed. I believe in one God, the Father God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, for all of us. God from God, light from light, true God and true God, be God and not me, one is essential with the Father, and all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the earth in heaven, and became man. For our sake was crucified on the cross of Spirit, and suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds the Father and the Son, who will the Father and the Son the the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I now acknowledge that I have for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. When, well, as a good shepherd tends his father's flock, so we ask God to help our brothers and sisters through so our prayers. That pastors and ministers guide their flocks with tender care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. Prayer. That governments carefully guard the safety and quality of food and water. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That young people preparing for confirmation and graduation be strengthened for a life of loving service to the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That members of this assembly share God's abundant feast with those that cannot be here especially the departed, the sick, and the homebound. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Finally, for world peace, that all countries treat their citizens with dignity and respect, and for the end of communism, terrorism, and violence in our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy, you sent your son to care for your flock. Heal and grant what we ask in the name of Jesus, our wizard Lord. Amen. Amen. Sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the grace and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all churches. Why do we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal will constantly at work to turn us 
may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We have come Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time of all, to allow you yet more glorious in Christ, our Passover has been sacrificed. For him, the children of light, wise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land of the people exalt in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the hundred of hosts sing together the ornamenting hem of your glory as they are claimed. gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that when the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore Lord I we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously may God these gifts you have brought to you for consecration that it may become the body and blood of your son our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed himself to bread, and giving good thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving good thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. I read this bread and drink this cup and proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of the church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with the spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain the inheritance of your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, your spouse, to the blessed apostles and with glorious mothers with St. Pedro and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we lie for unfailing God. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confer with faith and charity your pilgrim church honor of your servant. Francis, our Pope Thomas, our Bishop in the order of bishops of the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. 
this is going to see to the poor of this family whom you have summoned before you today in your compassion O merciful father god that yourself all your children scattered to all the world to our devoted brothers and sisters and especially for miguel and lady whom you are called from this life give kind admittance to your kingdom there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory we also pray for angels and them who are called from this life to yourself. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory to Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. For him and with him and her name of God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honors is yours forever and ever. command from the divine teaching we dare to say. you may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of our church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say, and my soul shall be healed. Thank you. 
Father Frankie told you my name is Deacon Dan, but my last name is Brick. And uh, I'm supposed to say, now buy a brick. <laughs> they paved the way for St. Pedro's future. Uh, Celebrants, participants, start a tradition. Order is a gift for weddings. In memory of first grandchildren, graduations, any other special occasion. I have to say, we've been coming down here plus 40 years, and I've watched this church grow, and uh, obviously it's well worth it. So my slogan is already filled better with the brick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Deacon. <laughs> You know, one of my one of my professors in the same seminar used to say, well, "Don't be afraid to ask." I was very pleased that I asked. Saying, for somebody to volunteer, you can help out, Elba. Elba, thank you for your service. You know, Elba is a computer person, so the mass you can see online, if you like her, this is exactly what she's doing now. But parishioners who are not able to come, and people everywhere, you know, watch this incredible mass. It's the Deaconry of Nord, when the Mass is available every Saturday at 5 p.m. for them. We'd like to thank also Susan, Sue, and uh, of course Michael, they do a good job. Thank you for the service, it's serious. It's always delighted, you know, <laughs> I'm very delighted to hear you singing and playing at the same time. You know, they, they, they do a good job, so we have to thank them for the service to our parish. Well, anyone visiting? Well, we'd like to welcome our visitors. <laughs> welcome to St. Pedro. You can't ask, you can't ask, make yourself at home. Anyone celebrating something this week? Like a birthday, wedding anniversary, something like that. Why is that, Judy? No? Not yet. <laughs> okay. Very good. Very soon you will be many years. I remember the last time they celebrated. 40? All right. <laughs> well, that's it. Many years. All right. <laughs> Next time, we are waiting for the for that day. All right. So we thank you for coming. It's a quarter to six. It's time to go home. Please stand for the final blessing. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth to my season. Thanks be to God. God. Yo 